I remember very good the camp, the Bergen Belsen. I understand the, the hunger. I, I remember the hunger, oh, it's yes. terrible. We saw the stars from hunger because we, we had nothing to eat. I want yes. to say you something about the bread in Bergen Belsen. I remember exactly the bread, how it was, something this. Meruba, oh. Meruba. Yeah. My mother, she sit in the bed and cut it for every day, put One the plate. finger and cut. F put the finger, finger and cut. And I sit near her and my eyes <laughs> outside, I so hungry, mm -hmm. but Really, even my grandmother and even my, my mother give me their portion. Mm -hmm. My eyes was outside <laughs> to, 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 see to, the to see the bread. And I remember my fifth birthday. <clears throat> it's on August 8. And uh, my parents, I don't know where from, they got the present. The nicest birthday present I ever had was a plate with sweets. I don't know how they, they traded things, that they, they had cigarettes or whatever, uh, and, and they got a, a full plate of sweets. And I was very, very happy. The, the, the nicest birthday present I ever got. And, uh, and I remember that there was a bar of marmalade there, uh, which uh, kind of marmalade that I, I, I never saw afterwards. It was solid. And, and I, and I ate those sweets for a few days. That was my fifth birthday in, in Bergen Berzen. I don't remember my sixth birthday, which was already in Romania back. And don't remember my seventh birthday and my fourth, four years. But the, the fifth birthday, I, I remember because distinctly because of this. And the means of exchange in a concentration camp, people know that was cigarettes. It's still reverberating in my ears. I can't understand how we had such thoughts even that next time we come, we will know better what to bring. I mean, now that I look better back on it, how did we ever think of a next time, God forbid? There was a wire, there was a sand, yellow sand, and in the sand was something green, a plant of tomato. After two or three days, we followed. You can every day to see the miracle. I didn't know that others saw it. <laughs> you saw the I tomato? I thought it was my, my own little secret. I saw it, it was green. It started, um, there were two fences. <laughs> and uh, it was between the two fences. And the second fence was supposed to be electrified something. Uh, and it was, it, it was growing between the two. And there were, I can't really know, about two or three meters between the two. And uh, it grew there. And one day it started to be a little pinkish. It wasn't really red. And we were very excited about it, of course, the children. And I went every day to see it. And uh, on maybe on the fifth or sixth day, the color of the tomato became red real red, strong red, one fruit, only one fruit. It was green and the red was inside the plane. But I, I asked her if I can touch it, if I can eat it, because you know, it was something uh, unnatural. But she told us that we can only see it. We cannot touch it and of course we can never taste it. This little plant, the green with the red tomato, this was something um, that uh, can describe our life. It was a dream. We saw, we saw the dream, but we can't touch it. I only know when I arrived to Israel, uh, still as a child, um, after the war, immediately after the war, they offered us, us a red tomato and a glass of white milk. And this red and white, I always say that when I be 80, I shall make paintings with this red and white. So the strong 
the strong memory of, of these kind of things, the colors and the hope that is behind was very, very strong. I tell you <clears throat> something about the danger. Uh, in Bergen Belsen, in the camp, they have no showers. They take the people once, uh, two weeks, one month, I don't know, each week. out each week, each week in each every week, week. Every week. And to a place that this was far the, from the barrack. Far yeah. the yes. And there they make the shower. My mother never take me to make shower. Never. Because they they understand that the shower is danger. Something with the shower is danger. And they never took me. Never. We still were not as badly treated as the other camps because we didn't they didn't send to crematoriums from us people. At the beginning, as long as uh, we thought that it's a provisory time, we had a school for the children on the ground, on the outside. But the children learned, and uh, uh, we were in the evenings, in all the barracks were lectures. We had a lot of, a lot of intellectuals, a lot of uh, actors, or amateur actors, and uh, all the, it was program every evening. But uh, from be, the, as the winter began, and it was very cold, and there is very cold, it is near the North Sea, and we had not enough clothing. Most of the people were sitting on the bed the whole of the day, except of the one, the one and a half hour was sometimes more of tsela appel. So we were standing outside for hours until they came to, to count how many we were. And it was raining and snowing and it was very, very cold. We had hunger, starvation. We had the roll calls in the morning, the terrible, terrible standing there for hours in the cold early morning, waiting till the German officer appeared to look us over. And even those who were sick had to go out and they had to be held up by others. Uh, as if they would care how many would be alive and how many we are, but this was part of the uh, procedure of uh, tormenting us. You know, I remember when I was standing there in rags, cold and shivering, and terribly worried about my family and starving, when this German officer came in his elegant uniform. And I was looking at him, the early in dawn, at dawn, we were standing already hours. And I looked at him in this elegant olive uniform, and I thought of my father, and I compared, I said to myself, I would never want to be change places with you, even though that I'm here standing in rags. I wouldn't want to be a just brutal an animal like you and have this on my conscience. When I left my home, I remember the last thing my father told me, the, German, the Germans can take everything from us, but remember, what you have here is how he said, what you learned in your father's home, this will stay with you as long as you live. This they cannot take away from you. Remember always where you come from, where you belong. And this is what kept me going. Not the racing, but there is a shit of the Hanhaga. Leadership, Cluj group from the Budapest group. But later we understood that the leadership is by the German and not by us. A very great evening. And uh, I understand that Dr. Yoles, I said, a very, very sympathetic fellow. And uh, my father uh, began to, uh, uh, to sing. Vere kettünk civakottunk mi, milyen jó lett végre ki is békülni. Pest mellett van Kolozsvár, Kolozsvár mellett van Pest, milyen jól végződik ez a mai est. I never heard it. I never it. means that we cried, we cried, we were racing. Cluj is near Budapest, Budapest is near Cluj. No, today we are all together here. 
how good uh, this uh, evening is ending very well, Ken. But once I saw, I saw candles. I will not forget this never. And I took two candles, they were big candles. I hid the candles to under my armhole. And I walked out with this to my bunk. And Friday night, I beat it with my teeth, each candle to little pieces. And I had for a few Friday nights to light in the back of the bunk, under a cot, we lit the candle. We said the blessing, we sang to it. It was a little home-like to welcome the Sabbath. Even in this terrible place, they did not dehumanize us. And then we turned, then we, we fa fast blew it out because they would have seen the light. But to sanctify the Sabbath, even there, they didn't, they, we didn't lose faith. That Yom Kippur is was the most important Yom Kippur in my life because uh, all my all along my life I know this Yom Kippur is Yom Haddin, but this Yom Kippur we were not sure that we shall be, uh, we will be alive after this day. We make a synagogue. She at the את הברק אחד שהפכו את זה לבית כנסת. אני אינני, אני חושבת שלא היה אדם מבוגר אחד שלא צם באותו יום כיפור, דתיים וחילונים וצעירים ומבוגרים. למרות הרע ולמרות שהיו מורבים, היום הזה היה חשוב לכולם. When he started to blow the shofar, I stood at the window of the barrack. So across the street in the Polish camp, they were pushing one of those wagons full of junk, uh, uh, labor that had absolutely no purpose. From one end to the camp, unload it, reload it, put it to the other camp and unload and reload. So we opened the window of the barrack and we told those Jews Listen, we are blowing the shofar. So they stopped for a second, just for a second. And the guards were beating them till blood came out from them. In November, when uh, it was the rumor that we shall not come out from Bergen-Belsen, uh, we made a great action to collect uh, clothing for the people. It was uh, registered everything the people brought and was decided that we shall uh, give everybody some clothing. The most of the people came with summer clothing mm. to, to arrive in Israel. My wife was the, the one who everybody believed in her. So she made the, the list of the clothing. So we began to prepare us for self-defense ridiculously, with stones and the pieces of, uh, of wood from the, the, from the beds. Um, uh, fortunately, it came to an end on, on the 4th of December, and then we came out. We are now uh, gathered together. Uh, we are recalling our liberation from Bergen-Belsen. In uh, December the 7th, 1944, we arrived to Switzerland around two days before Hanukkah. I don't know to what extent we were aware that it was even Hanukkah. It's now 62 years later that we can gather together with our families and we continue to light the Hanukkah candles. Baruch Ato Hashem, Elokeinu Melech Olam, Asher Kitshonu B'mitzvah Yisav, V'tzivonu Ladlikner Shel Chanukah. Oh, so Yeshua, see, 
le chonoe, le chabeyak, ti kombeste filosi, le chantaidon, 